not see the choice coming like what the heck Hey friends, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be starting on a thriller reading vlog because I do have a few thriller arcs that have been stacking up that I've been meaning to get to and there's just been so many exciting thrillers publishing recently. So I have three different thrillers that I'm going to be reading in today's video. The first one is actually going to be Daughter of Mine by Megan Miranda. This one just went on sale April 9th, so pretty recently here. This is one that I've been really curious about even though me and Megan Miranda don't have the best history together. I feel like most of the books that I've read from Megan Miranda were either DNFs or I ended up rating them pretty low. But this one does sound interesting because we're following this character named Hazel and she is the daughter of Mirror Lake's longtime local detective. And it's a story about how she had left that small town behind, but now she's gonna be going back to the small town because her dad has recently passed away. And then it says, of course, long hidden secrets begin to emerge, including evidence that may help finally explain the mystery of her mother's disappearance. And so I'm really excited to read this one actually, because this one does have some of my favorite thriller tropes. Like I love the trope of a character going back to the town where they came from and like uncovering the truth of the past. It's definitely one of my favorite tropes, so I'm curious to check out this one. And then in this vlog, I'm also going to be reading Where Sleeping Girls Lie. I wasn't originally planning to read this for this vlog, but I just picked up this book recently when I just did my last book shopping video. If you missed it, I'll have it linked down below. But I went book shopping with my mom and I picked up this young adult thriller that I've been very excited about. And so I just immediately decided to pick it up and read it for this video. And this one is actually from the same author as Ace of Spades, which is a young adult thriller that I really enjoyed a couple years ago when it came out. And you know, young adult mystery thriller books like this can be very hit or miss for me and I don't usually gravitate towards them if I'm being honest but because this is an author that I've really loved in the past and because this one sounds really interesting to me I was really excited to pick up this book because in this story we're following this young girl who gets transferred to this prestigious boarding school and then her new roommate Elizabeth disappears and that's kind of where this story really kicks off. I think it sounds like a really fun time. I've been hearing really great things about this so I can't wait to read this one and then the last book that I'm going to be reading for this video is If Something Happens to Me by Alex Finn and this one that I have is actually an ARC copy. This one is going on sale in May. Alex Finlay, I feel like, is another one of those thriller authors that has been pretty hit or miss for me so far, but mostly a miss. But this is one that I've been especially intrigued by because I did hear that part of this book takes place in Italy, which I'm very excited about that element of this story because, you know, I'm going to be going to Italy for the first time this October, so I thought it would be really cool to read a thriller that partially takes place in Italy. But then also because this one also has the trope of, like, a character who left the small town they grew up in and now years later Later, they're trying to uncover the truth of what really happened that night. And basically, we're following this character named Ryan, who he keeps reliving this terrible night over and over and over again, where him and his girlfriend, who were in high school, they were seniors. The last night they had together, all he remembers is the car door ripping open, the crushing blow to his head, the hands yanking him from the vehicle, and then his girlfriend screams as she was being taken. And then when he wakes up after his blackout, his girlfriend is gone and the car is gone, and there's no evidence of anything that happened. And then this story is taking place years later when Ryan is on a trip in Italy, and he gets a phone call saying that Ali's car has been found. And not just that, but there's a note in the car that's very cryptic that says, if something happens to me. I don't know, it sounds really interesting. Like this one definitely intrigues me, so I'm excited to check it out. So these are the three thrillers that I'm gonna be reading for this video. However, before we do jump into today's video, I just wanted to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is Factor. Because Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. They have a team of gourmet chefs who create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. And with Factor, they really do make eating completely stress-free because these meals are ready within just two minutes. You just put this in the microwave for two minutes. You can put it in the oven for a little bit longer if you'd like. And they are ready to go and they are so tasty and so nutritious. You can choose from a weekly menu of 35 options and you can choose so many different options like calorie smart, keto, protein plus, vegan and vegetarian options. I think the most convenient thing for me with Factor is the fact that you can skip the grocery store run and you can skip the food preparation, you can skip the cleanup. It really is such a time saver when you have so much going on in your day because nobody wants to be sitting there thinking all day about like, what am I gonna make for dinner tonight? And then the effort of like having to go out and buy the groceries and actually making the dinner, it takes time. And the best thing for me is the quality of the food because not only is it ready within two minutes, but it tastes like a homemade meal. Like it tastes like something nutritious that you would make for yourself. So you can skip the overpriced takeout trap because Factor is cheaper and way more delicious. So for somebody that has a pretty busy schedule that also kind of dreads cooking on some nights, I think Factor is the perfect solution. So you can head to factor75.com or use the link down in my description and use my code GabbyReads50 to get 50% off your first box 
and 20% off your next month's order. That's code GABBYREADS50 at factor75.com. The link is down in the description and you can use that code to get 50% off your first box and then 20% off the next box. That is such an incredible deal, which is such an incredible deal. So thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the reading vlog. Let me send you back a couple days to when I started. Hi, how's it going? I am here with the first update for this vlog because today I got a start on Daughter of Mine by Megan Miranda. I was so excited because I got the chance to start reading this while I was doing some reading sprints with my friend Katie earlier today. And I already got 120 pages in. I actually just hit part two of the book like just a few chapters ago. And so far, I am so happy to say that it has been going well so far. I'm having a good time. I'm already invested. And I'm not gonna lie, with this book, I was excited for it, but I was also just a little bit nervous because because me and Megan Miranda, you know, I haven't really enjoyed a lot of her books so far. I think I've only read maybe two or three things from her and they've all been either rated pretty low or I DNF'd them. And so I didn't really have high hopes going into this one. And in fact, I even told Katie while we were on reading sprints, I was like, if the publisher didn't send me this book, I don't think I would have wanted to read it. Like, I don't think I would have tried to seek out this book and read it myself. The publisher actually just sent me this. Like, I didn't even request this one. So like, I didn't really have plans to read it. But because I've been in such a thriller mood recently, I was like, you know what? Let's just give the new Megan Miranda a go and I'm actually so glad that I did because at this point in time at 120 pages in this is like the most invested I've ever felt in a Megan Miranda novel like I think it's so interesting so far so in this story we're following this character named Hazel and she's going to be returning to the small town where she grew up that's called Mirror Lake and she's returning to the small town because her dad has recently passed away and he left her his house in the inheritance it's really interesting because her dad was a local you know well-known detective in the area and he recently recently died under like some suspicious circumstances. So her dad was actually a local detective in the area. Like he was pretty well known by the community. And so his death is pretty unexpected, but it's also, I think it's a little bit unexpected that he would like leave the house to her because he also does have two sons. And both of his sons are also people who work for the police. Like they're all working in the police. So they think it's kind of weird that he would like leave her the house. Like it's almost like he's trying to like lure her back to this small town. I feel like right away at the start of this book, there was a lot of characters being introduced. Like I was taking notes to my phone because I was like, oh my gosh, like who are all these people? We just get a lot of names right off the bat. And to be honest, it was a little bit overwhelming. Like the first like 30 to 40 pages, I was like, oh my God, like, is this going to be so hard for me to get into? But I feel like it really quickly picks up and it becomes a very quick read right away. I really do like the atmosphere of this like small town called Mirror Lake. It definitely has those like lake summer vibes. I also really like how easy this book is to read so far because so far we're only following from the perspective of this girl, Hazel. And so far it's only been told in the present day. So like there's no jumping around, there's no flashbacks, there's no like dual perspectives. It's really straightforward in the way that we're only getting Hazel's point of view, but I actually really like that because I really do like Hazel as a character and I'm already so invested in what's going on, especially at the end of part one. I feel like they dropped something that was kind of like, oh, like it wasn't necessarily a plot twist, but it was just something that made me even more intrigued trying to figure out where the story is going. I actually wrote down one of my predictions and I'm really hoping that I'm wrong. But there's this whole story too happening with like Hazel's mother and like what actually happened to her mother. I wanted to make sure that it mentions this in the premise of the book, and it does. It says that there's a drought that's been happening in their area, so as the water level in the lake drops, there's these long hidden secrets that start to emerge, including evidence that may help finally explain the mystery of her mother's disappearance. And so there's also like that happening in the story. Like it's a really interesting story about like what ended up happening to her mother. Like does she know the full truth of like what happened to her mom? Or is she being lied to? There's also this guy in the book, his name is Nico, 
and he's like really close friends with her older brother Gage who's like the police officer and it's just interesting because they kind of have this like mysterious past where you're like okay did she just have a crush on him or were they together like you don't really know but like there was definitely something going on between them back in the day but then also now it's like is something still going on between them like are they gonna get together I don't know I'm just liking it so far I really like the characters I like the atmosphere I feel like this might be the perfect book to like read by a lake especially in the summertime like maybe for summerween Ooh, I think this would be a good pick for summerween actually but yeah I don't want to jinx it because I'm still so early in the book but so far I am very impressed like I'm having a lot more fun with this than I was expecting to so that's great I mean the fact that I'm literally sitting here kind of like ugh, because I have plans tomorrow and I'm not gonna be able to like sit in bed and read this all day tomorrow at least not until I get home tomorrow night I'm gonna be doing like a book shopping thing with my mom all day tomorrow which I'm really looking forward to but the fact that this book is already pulling me in so much that I want to like drop all my plans to read this I think that's a great sign so hopefully I can keep up with this feeling that I have for this book like hopefully the rest of it goes just as smoothly <laughs> here with an update because I just finished reading Daughter of Mine by Megan Miranda. I literally just finished reading this like less than two minutes ago and I'm sorry I didn't update you sooner because I have just been reading this over like the last couple of days actually. It took me about three days to get through this one but it was actually kind of fun just because I was doing that thing where I would just read maybe like a hundred pages before I would go to bed at night and it kind of reminded me of the way that I used to read thrillers <laughs> because I feel like nowadays I'm a kind of reader where like I can really I finish a book within a day. I feel like these days it's really rare for me to take my time with the book especially for a book that's not too long I mean this one's only about 350 pages but I also feel like I might have some mixed feelings on this one because I was really invested okay I was really invested in the first like two-thirds of this book to the point where I was like struggling to want to put it down I was just really connecting with the characters and the setting I really loved the setting of this book like the summer lake vibes are really great in this one I loved the eerie feeling throughout this book of like feeling like somebody was in the house with her or like somebody had been taking something from her house and she didn't even know. Definitely had that like somebody's watching you or somebody's in your house when you don't know that they're there kind of vibe that I really love in thrillers. I thought some of it was done so well to the point where like I would get goosebumps because I was like genuinely creeped out by what was happening. <laughs> then the ending for me personally I do think this ending was a little bit underwhelming. I feel like this book you know for 350 pages I feel like the ending doesn't get very intense for me until maybe like the last 30 to 40 pages but then it just ends so abruptly for me. I feel like I didn't get closure on a lot of the things that I kind of wanted more closure on or more explanation for like what was actually happening there. I honestly thought a few things were a little bit confusing at the end and I don't know if that was just me not paying close enough attention or if it was actually the book but I don't know the ending was a little bit underwhelming. The villain character it did feel a little bit cheesy to me and a little bit predictable at the end. I actually wrote down a prediction at the end of part one that ended up being true at the end of the book. So like not to flex or anything, but I definitely saw that twist coming. <laughs> That's why with my rating with this one, I'm not exactly sure how I want to rate this. Like I think it's probably going to end up being around a three and a half star. If I was the type of person to do like even more specific ratings, I would probably consider this one like a 3.75 because I had a lot of fun with this, especially considering this is a Megan Miranda. Like this is definitely the most successful read I've ever had from this author because I had fun reading this. Like I can't say the same about the other thrillers that I've read from this author. This was definitely the most fun I've had with a thriller of hers. I think something that this book suffers from is the fact that there are so many characters, like literally so many characters, even characters being introduced around like the halfway point that I was still trying to take notes and keep track of who everybody is. It's like, you know, every single person who lives in this small town. So I think that was a little much. I think she could have cut down on some of these characters, to be honest, because so many of them end up being irrelevant and have nothing really to do with the story. Like, I don't need to have that many characters in a thriller. I think that becomes a little bit daunting 
daunting and it becomes a little bit overwhelming trying to keep track of who's who. But at the end of the day, like, I don't know, I really did like Hazel as a protagonist. Like, I enjoyed her. I liked her kind of complicated relationship with her brothers in this book. I liked her, like, mysterious kind of relationship with both of her parents because since both of them were no longer around, you know, her mother disappeared years ago and her dad recently died. So because her parents weren't really around and they weren't, like, active characters in the story, it was kind of interesting to, like, learn about their lives and their past through Hazel's perspective. Overall, I really did like the way that this one is written. It's definitely my favorite Megan Miranda that I've read so far. I just think the ending was a little bit, like, rushed and just, like, not my favorite. I expected a little bit more from that ending. Like, I really wanted to be shocked and I wasn't. Overall, this is still probably, like, a 3.5 or 3.75 for me. Like, I had a mostly fun time. I would still recommend this. So I feel like that's kind of a win. Like, I don't know. I'll take it. <laughs> I feel like with thrillers these days, I'm becoming more and more picky, you know, because I do feel like this is something that I could have read maybe, like, five or six years ago and maybe I would have given this four stars or even higher. Like, I don't know. Am I just becoming more picky or are books becoming less interesting? That's always the question that I ask myself. I don't know. I wanted to update you because I have started on Where Sleeping Girls Lie. I just got up to chapter 14, so I'm about 116 pages in so far. This afternoon has been very productive. I was doing some video editing earlier today, and then I just went to the library. I picked up a library hold. I just went to the gym. I just got out, and I've been listening to this one on audio throughout the day, and so far it's going well. Even though young adult mystery thrillers don't always work for me because I loved Ace of Spades as much as I did, this was definitely one of my more anticipated thrillers of the year. Something that I thought was really cool about the beginning of this book is that there's this whole page where it just says like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, like over and over again. And the audiobook, it was so cool. It started like echoing her voice with like all these layers. I think the audiobook in general has been a really great experience so far. Like they added so many extra little sound effects and things to this audiobook to make it a really cool listening experience. So I would really recommend the audiobook for this. But anyways, in this story, we're following this young girl and her name is Shadi. Her name is spelled like S-A-D-E, but the audiobook narrator, she's pronounced Announcing it as shoddy and she's starting her third year of high school but she's been homeschooled up to this point and now she's gonna be getting sent to this prestigious noble academy it's kind of like a private boarding school and the boarding school vibes in this are really great so far like I feel like it has a really great atmosphere I feel like I can easily visualize the school I can visualize all the students and this definitely already has the typical you know like high school clicks where there's like the mean girls there was a scene that honestly felt straight out of mean girls because there was like a group of girls and they were like so you're homeschooled or like you know they asked her all these questions and then they were like well we, we'd invite you to sit with us but like you know we're just finishing up and I don't know it just felt very mean girls like I enjoy that <laughs> the story really kicks off when you know our main character her roommate Elizabeth goes missing and it seems like the school is like not really doing as much as they could about a student going missing like I don't know there's just a lot of mystery around like what actually happened to this girl and why isn't anybody putting in more effort to find her and so our main protagonist she kind of takes it upon herself with her friend Baz who is this guy that she's recently gotten close with at the school. Like, they kind of take it upon themselves to try and figure out what actually happened to this girl, Elizabeth. And so they're starting to, like, uncover some shady shit that might be going down at this school. And so far, it's been really interesting. I'm really liking the setup of it. I also really like this protagonist, and I like her friendship with this guy, Baz. One thing that I didn't realize about this book, though, is how long it would be. I mean, granted, the book is still less than 400 pages. It's only about 390-ish pages, but the audiobook is over 16 hours long. I was like, damn, that's it's kind of a lengthy audiobook, but I think I also realized it's because the text in this book is actually pretty small and the chapters are also pretty long in this for the most part. Like there's been a few shorter chapters, but there's for the most part, it's pretty long chapters. So I was like, damn, okay. Like this author did not come to mess around. <laughs> I feel like 16 hours for an audiobook is pretty long for a mystery thriller book. Like I feel like most of the mystery thriller books that I listen to are between like nine to 12 hours on audio. I'm glad that it's going well so far though. I'm really liking the atmosphere. I'm liking the setting of this boarding school and I am invested in 
this mystery of like what happened to this girl and so I'm probably just gonna continue listening to this one throughout the night made the decision that I'm gonna drive down to Chipotle tonight and get Chipotle Chipotle is actually about like a 25 to 30 minute drive from where we live so that's why I say like oh I want to go down I want to get out of the apartment tonight because Chipotle is kind of a little bit of a drive it's not as close to us as I would like I think that's the plan and I will update you with more thoughts on this one when I have them <laughs> How's it going? It's been a number of days since the last time that I updated this vlog. It's been like two or three days and I've still been reading Where Sleeping Girls Lie. I'm actually now 258 pages in so I'm still making a dent but I still have so much left. I only had time to read a little bit yesterday because yesterday I ended up taking Rachel and Obed's engagement photos. We drove down to this place called Deception Pass which was like an hour 15 minutes away and so yesterday was pretty much doing that all day. It was amazing. You'll see more clips of that in my upcoming monthly vlog which I'm so excited about. The pictures turned out so good and it was such a great day. Now today is Sunday. I'm actually going to be going over to my parents house this afternoon. I'm going to be staying there for the next couple of days watching Phoenix while they're taking a little trip. My parents are going to take this little trip to Canada. And so this afternoon I scheduled some Patreon reading sprints while I'm at the house. So I'm definitely going to be trying to finish this one up today. But like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm still only like 250 pages into this book. I feel like I've been reading it for such a long time. For me, I feel like this book was really a strong start in the first like 100 to 150 pages. Like I was really invested and I was really in it. But then I feel like also once we hit a certain point, it's starting to get, I don't know, it's starting to feel a little bit repetitive or like I'm just kind of waiting for something to happen in the plot. I'm getting a little bit bored. I'm not gonna lie. I'm getting a little bit bored. I mean very recently just within the last like chapter or two that I just listened to while I was straightening my hair. Oh my gosh dude there are some things starting to happen in this plot where I'm like wait like this is getting a lot darker than I was anticipating. Like the themes in this book are definitely a lot darker than I thought they would be. I did notice that right in the front of this book this author does include a content warning here on the front page so I would definitely read through that content warning if there's anything in particular that you're a little bit sensitive to because whoa <laughs> there are things happening in the plot that I was not really expecting it to go in this direction and so I was a little taken off guard by that but I'm still here for it and I think if anything this is going to make the second half of this book really intense which is kind of what I was hoping for but this was in a way that I wasn't really expecting it to go in this direction so like we'll have to see how I end up feeling about the rest of this one. I feel like in a lot of ways this one's reminding me so much of Ace of Spades for so many reasons like I feel like there is a lot of crossover between these books because I don't think I mind personally that much that this reads a lot like Ace of Spades to me because it's been so many years since I've read Ace of Spades. It's been at least like three years if not longer so like I don't really mind it as much but I don't think it would be a good idea to read these like back to back you know because they do kind of feel similar in a lot of ways but I'm definitely going to be finishing up this one this afternoon when I'm at my parents house so let's get to it. I can tell you my problems meditating my silence but I keep pushing my pen rotating my stylus Brokenness feeling like sin, now no breath, low dollar. Used to be left on red, now all the girls go holler. Now all the girls go follow. All the fake friends gon' pile up. I need peace to borrow, get that shit right back tomorrow. Somehow all the fans go bravo, smile so much to hide my sorrow. Faith is shaky in Verado. I can't hold the frown too long. I can't stay down too long. Look, when the Okay, 
hello. I am here to update you because I am at my parents' house. I've been doing reading sprints on Patreon for about two and a half hours now, and I just finished reading Where Sleeping Girls Lie. And this is a book that I enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed it, but I also have mixed feelings about it. Because, you know, as I mentioned in the last update, the middle of this book definitely started to drag. And, you know, this book is just about 400 pages long, and I don't really think this book needed to be that long. There was definitely some slow pacing in this book that just really made it difficult to get through even though I really liked the beginning and I did really like the ending. Like I think ever since part three of this book there was a reveal that I was pretty shocked by and then from that point on I do think the story was pretty fast paced throughout that last third of the book and so I really did like how this one ended up going. I feel like this is one of those young adult thrillers that you know it's really powerful. It has a lot of social commentary on a number of different topics but also you know keeping that in mind this one does feel pretty heavy for a young adult book. Like some of the topics and themes in this book are very serious and some of the themes in this book I wasn't even really personally anticipating for this book to really cover those topics so definitely look up the trigger warnings for this one because it does get a little bit more dark than the typical young adult book does at least in my opinion but I did really like this one overall I don't know if I enjoyed it more than Ace of Spades though at this point in time I can't even remember what my rating for Ace of Spades was I think I gave that one four stars I don't think I enjoyed this one quite as much it feels like for me this one's probably going to be around a 3.5 because there were a lot of things that I loved about this. I mean, the beginning and the ending were really solid. I really liked the ending and the last third of this book. I also really liked the characters. I was invested in the mystery and I really do appreciate a lot of the social commentary in this book. It was mostly just the dragging of the story in the middle, like the pacing. I just don't think there's any reason for this audiobook to be 16 hours long. And even though this book, it's at about 400 pages, but it feels even longer because of the way that it's written. Because the font in this book is so small and like this author really wrote some long chapters. Like I can't even tell you how many times on the audiobook it would start the next chapter and just the one chapter was an hour long on the audiobook. I don't necessarily enjoy long chapters, especially when it comes to like mystery thriller books, because usually like for a mystery thriller for me, I like getting to the end of the chapter where like the author will give you just a little something at the end of the chapter to keep you wanting to read. But when the chapter is just so long in a thriller book like this, it really feels like the story starts to drag quite a bit. And I wasn't necessarily a fan of like the middle portion of this book, you know, because usually I'm the type of person that I can finish a mystery thriller in like a day or two, you know? So for me to have taken a couple of days to read this, even with the audiobook, I feel like that tells you right there that I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. But with all that being said, I think this is still around a 3.5 for me, which is still a really good rating. I do think I'll continue to pick up books from this author in the future because I really do like the writing style. I like the way that the characters feel so real and they feel so fleshed out. And I do think as far as like young adult thriller or mysteries go, I think this author is writing some of the best young adult mystery thriller books because this genre with young adult, I don't think it always works for me, but this one was definitely more of a hit than a miss, so I'll take it. I'm happy with it. <laughs> Hi, girl. Sweet little bit. Hello, good morning. It is the next afternoon and I have started on if something happens to me. I went out and got breakfast this morning at one of my local coffee shops and then I've just been chilling starting this book. I'm only about 40 pages in but I thought I would update you because there's a few things about this thriller that I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like for example, um, the fact that it takes place in a town called Leavenworth, Kansas. I think that's so funny because there's a really, really popular town in Washington called Leavenworth that's kind of like a huge landmark kind of 
of place. And so I think that's kind of cool that this one takes place in Leavenworth, Kansas. But then this one also takes place in Italy, which is also very cool. And part of the reason why I was so excited to read this one, because you know, I am going to be going to Italy for the first time this October. And one of the first scenes that I just read that took place in Italy, I was like, oh my gosh, like the vibes are immaculate. And so that was pretty cool. But anyways, in this story so far, we're following a number of different perspectives. We have three different point of view so far. So the first point of view is from our main protagonist dude and his name is Ryan. He was actually from this small town, Leavenworth, Kansas. And in the first chapter, it's kind of like a prologue from when he was like a teenager in high school. He was a senior in high school and him and his girlfriend were like about to get freaky in her car when like, I don't know exactly what happened. There was like some kind of car wreck. I think he hit his head. He blacked out. He was in the car with her. He doesn't remember. And then when he woke up, not only was the car gone, but his girlfriend, Allison, she was also gone. And so the police started to question him. They were like, what did you do to her? And he's like, I don't remember anything because he blacked out. And so now the story is flashing forward five years later when he has left the small town. He's actually working as a lawyer now and he's on a trip in Italy. And then we also get the perspective from this character named Poppy. And she's working as a sheriff's deputy deputy in the small town of Leavenworth, Kansas. And the really ironic and weird thing about that is that when we're following her perspective, the first scene with her is how they find Allison's car in this lake. And the car's been in the lake for five years and nobody knew. So like there's new evidence in the case with Allison. And that's not a spoiler or anything because it's all mentioned in the blur. But the reason why I said that was weird is because the book that I just read, the Megan Miranda book, Daughter of Mine, that was literally the thing was like there was cars in the water that they were pulling out of the water. And so like, what are the chances that I would read two thrillers back to back where they're like pulling cars out of water. I don't know. I just thought that was really funny. But in this situation, it's really interesting because in her car that's been in the water for five years, they find the dead bodies of two men and they don't know who these men are. But then they also find a note in the car that's in her handwriting that says, if something happens to me. And so, so far we're getting Ryan's perspective. We're getting the perspective of the character Poppy, who's like the sheriff's deputy. And then we're also getting the third perspective from this guy named Shane O'Leary. And he's living in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. It is very unclear how this guy Shane is connected to these other two characters so far and the opening scene with him was just like him on a boat with like some man and they were like throwing some man overboard like I don't know. I do see in the premise here it does say Ryan has no idea that his salvation may lie with a young sheriff's deputy in Kansas and a mobster in Philadelphia who experienced tragedy of his own. So like I don't really know how this mobster dude I don't know how his story is going to connect and he's definitely the point of view that I'm the least interested in right now. Like I don't really know if I need his point of view like is it necessary i don't know also can i just say that <laughs> The way that this Ryan character has been written so far is a little bit annoying. I mean, the author is definitely making it clear that he's one of those men that like women just absolutely like drop their panties for him. You know, like he's hot. He was on the basketball team in high school. Like all the girls wanted him. And then one of his friends on the Italy trip is like, oh my God, like I wish I could live in your shoes for one day because all the girls and all the guys want to be with you. And like, that's all fine and dandy, like whatever. I mean, it's a little annoying, but then what really started to irk me was the way that this man would talk about other women like when we're reading from Ryan's perspective and he talks about the other girls on this Italy trip with him when he says it looks like they had been awake for hours Instagram ready with their contoured makeup that looks like they applied it while watching a tutorial from a Kardashian these women are smart top of the class at Georgetown law but get too caught up in social media like everybody else he supposes like what? <laughs> Why are you judging other women and their makeup? Like, just let them live, bro. And then he goes on to say how he's thinking about Allison because she wouldn't be taking selfies or making TikToks. She'd be drinking this all in. Like, yeah, she's so much better than the other girls. Give me a fucking break, dude. You know, like, this is what happens when you read about a man from a man's perspective and his perspective on women, just like judging other women and their makeup choices. So like, he's a little bit annoying. I don't know if he's supposed to be annoying, but he's annoying. So anyways, I'm only 40 pages in. I'm just gonna continue reading this after it's only about 1.30. Hi, I wanted to check in with you again because I've been reading so much for these last couple of hours. I'm already 222 pages into this book. I only have 100 pages left. It is reading so freaking fast. It's only like 3.15 in the afternoon. Like I read those 200 pages so fast. This book is just, it's so fast paced. Something that I'm really loving about this is the really short chapters. And I actually kind of do like the changing the point of views, like every chapter, because even though it was a little hard to follow at first now, it's really easy 
easy for me to follow and I'm just flying through the pages like oh my gosh this book is just so action-packed and it's definitely one of those books where like every single chapter ends on like a little bit of a cliffhanger so it just keeps you wanting to read more. You know what's actually interesting too about this is that I thought for some reason that I wouldn't like reading from Poppy's perspective because she's like you know a sheriff's deputy and usually I don't like reading from like detective or police perspectives like usually that can be kind of boring for me but she's actually my favorite perspective in this book and I actually think she's a little bit more of the protagonist than I was expecting at least especially in the beginning of this book like the first half we really got a lot more of her perspective than Ryan's perspective like I thought Ryan would be like the main protagonist and now it seems like it kind of is now that I'm like 200 pages in but like at the beginning this story really feels like it's Poppy's story but oh my gosh dude the ending of part one at about 180 pages into the book dude <laughs> I did not see that twist coming like what the heck sometimes that twist doesn't work for me but then sometimes it does and like in this case it totally worked for me I did not see it coming I was completely thrown off guard like why did I not see that coming and so ever since page 180 I've just been flying through it even more because I've, I really enjoyed that twist and now it has me more curious to see where this could be going it's wild to me though that Ryan's perspective is actually like one of the least interesting to me because a lot of Ryan's point of view is how when he's on this trip in Italy he like sees this man that like he thought that that was the man who actually took Allison that night and so he gets obsessed with like trying to track down this man and a lot of the scenes are just him like running around Italy and a lot of Europe just like trying to track down this man and like don't get me wrong Ryan's perspective has gotten a lot more interesting with like what's happening now in the story but like in those first like 100 to 200 pages I was kind of bored by Ryan's perspective a little bit but the story still reads so fast-paced that I didn't really care wow I'm actually starting to enjoy this a lot more than I thought I would because the beginning I was kind of like yeah I don't know how I feel about this I'm not too sure but now I'm just so curious to see where this is gonna go I have a few predictions and I hope that I'm wrong but this book is just reading so quick so I had to update you before I finish it I don't really know if I'm gonna have the chance to finish it tonight because my sister's coming over in probably like less than an hour and we're gonna be getting burgers and just hanging out and stuff but like if I didn't have plans tonight I would try to immediately finish this but I might have to save these last 100 pages for later tonight or maybe tomorrow but I don't know uh, it feels so good to be like obsessed with a thriller right now. I just love this feeling of when you're like reading a thriller and you're just like oh, can't stop flipping the pages. It's so fun. So I'm having a good time. I'm happy about it. I'll update you with final thoughts when I have them. <laughs> here with the final update for this vlog because I have finished reading if something happens to me. I actually ended up finishing this last night after my sister left <laughs> because you know she came over we had dinner we had some burgers and then we actually ended up watching more of the Traders UK and then after she left I was like I only have like 40 pages left so I literally just went upstairs and I finished reading this last night and I think overall this one's probably gonna end up being a solid four stars from me because I don't think I can give it anything higher just because the ending of this book was a little little bit anticlimactic for me. At least like with those last few chapters and those last like 20 pages, I thought there might be a little bit of a harder punch at the ending and there just wasn't. This is still definitely getting four stars for me just because of how much fun I had with this thriller. It's just been a long time since I've read a thriller that has kept me this engaged throughout the entire book. I really would have finished this in one sitting if I didn't have plans last night. I feel like in some ways this book is different from the typical thrillers that I enjoy or if I like tried to pitch this to people, I feel like it wouldn't sound like the typical thriller that I read just because of the like mob aspects of this book you know because there is that character in Philadelphia who's like a mobster and his storyline is definitely like a big part of the story where there's like mobster connections and like these guys are trying to get revenge on people you know like that's definitely a big part of this story and typically that's something that I wouldn't really care about and also because there's the perspective of like a sheriff's deputy like almost like a police almost like procedural perspective but I think because it was mixed in with a few other things 
I didn't mind it as much because usually in a thriller, like if we're only following from the perspective of say like a gangster, like mob dude, then like I could care less. Or if we're only following from the perspective of like a detective or a cop or something, then usually I don't care for it. For some reason with this, it really worked for me because it was mixed in with other perspectives. So I felt like it just kept the story moving. But I also feel like this thriller did have a lot of tropes that I do usually enjoy in thrillers. Like the main one being, you know, like something happened to this guy in his small town where he grew up years ago and now it's years later and he's trying to uncover the truth of like what really happened that night. That is definitely a trope that I really continue to love in all the thrillers that I'm reading. Like I love that trope. I eat that shit up. I don't know why. And I love that this one, it like simultaneously had the small town vibes because you know, what happened to him took place in Kansas in like a really small town in Kansas. Then at the same time, it also had like the really fun elements of like taking place in Italy and like in France. And there was a lot of really cool locations like that that this book took place in that I just thought added so much to the story. And even though in this book, there were definitely some perspectives that I preferred more than the others. But even when I was reading from a perspective that I didn't necessarily care for, I think this book was just well written in the sense that it was very fast paced and the chapters were very short. You know, it's like one of those thrillers that's very easy to read. So even if you're not necessarily loving a certain perspective, you don't have to read from it for too long before we're like moving on to the next thing, you know? But yeah, I'm so excited to have really enjoyed another thriller. I'm happy that this one was four stars for me. This was definitely the most success with the thriller that I had in this video. And this one is going on sale in May. So how exciting that it's gonna be coming out pretty soon here. Overall though, I think I'm really happy with the success of this video because these are all three thrillers that I really did enjoy and that I can recommend. I didn't have any in here that I absolutely loved, but I also didn't have any in here that I absolutely hated either. And I feel like it's been a long time since I've had so much success with thrillers like back to back to back like this. I feel like usually when I'm making these like three thriller vlogs, it's usual for me to find one that I just absolutely hate. And so I'm glad that that didn't happen this time. I mostly enjoyed everything that I read for this vlog. So that is exciting. And you'll have to let me know if you have read any of these three books or if you plan to read any of these three books, then I would love to know your thoughts on them. And thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye.